welcome back last week i posted a video on all these skincare devices i use on a regular basis and though there are quite a few of them i also mentioned in that video that none of them are necessary and that there are much more important things we can do to improve the health of our skin our overall well-being but also the way we feel about ourselves and the way we feel about aging than using skincare devices. So in today's video, I want to talk about some things we can do to improve the health of our skin and our overall well-being, which have nothing to do with skincare, skincare devices, or any other procedures. Now, one of the very sweet compliments I get from you is that I have beautiful glowing skin. Thank you. Of course, that is always lovely to hear, but it really means a lot to me since my skin has not always been healthy, beautiful or glowing. In fact, quite the opposite. I used to have very unhealthy skin. I had lots of premature aging as early as my 20s, lots of lines and wrinkles in my 20s, lots of sunspots, redness, congestion. I had all kinds of dermatitis, including perioral dermatitis. I had very bad rosacea, so my skin was a mess and it was far from healthy. So in today's video, I want to share with you some things that have helped me drastically to improve the health of my skin and also my overall well-being. Now, what I'm going to share with you might not be a complete list of things we can do. So if you have anything to add, please add it in the comments. I always love to hear from you and we can all benefit from each other's knowledge. What has probably made the biggest difference for me is diet. And I'm not talking about any specific kind of diet and definitely not the kind of diet where we restrict calories. In fact, quite the opposite. As many of you know, I was anorexic for a couple of decades and that lack of nutrition definitely showed in my skin as well as, of course, the rest of my body. I did not feed my body enough calories to get the building blocks to make collagen. I did not feed it enough to get enough antioxidants to protect me from oxidative stress, nor did I eat enough healthy fats. In fact, I ate no fat because I was so afraid of fat. So first of all, eating plenty of calories to make sure we get all of our nutritional needs met. Now, ideally, of course, we want those calories to come from whole foods as much as possible. So eliminating processed foods as much as possible and focusing on whole foods, eating plenty of fruits, vegetables, healthy protein, so our body can make collagen. To make collagen, the body needs a string of amino acids, which it gets from protein, but it also needs vitamin C, crucial. There is no collagen production without vitamin C. So this is where our fruits and vegetables come in. The body also needs a couple of cofactors to make collagen, but as long as we eat plenty of whole foods, we will get those cofactors. So along with eating plenty of fruits and vegetables, healthy proteins, we also need healthy fats. So eating avocados, olives, and something else that has been very beneficial for me is to increase my intake of anti-inflammatory omega-3s. Omega-3s are essential fatty acids. So are omega-6s and omega-9s. But though omega-6s and omega-9s are essential fatty acids, they tend to be on the inflammatory side versus omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. Most of us eat too many omega-6s and omega-9s and not enough omega-3s. 
So for me, really focusing on balancing that ratio between omega-3s and omega-6s and omega-9s and eating more omega-3 rich foods. I eat lots of chia seed, flax seed, hemp seed, and of course, fish is also rich in omega-3. Personally, I don't eat fish. So I focus on chia seed, hemp seed, and flax seed and increasing my intake of these anti-inflammatory omega-3s has made a huge difference. Something else that has made a big difference for me is to eliminate inflammatory foods as well as foods I have a sensitivity to. For me personally, that was dairy as well as gluten. When I used to eat dairy and gluten, not only did it show on my skin, but I was always miserable. I was always, always bloated and I just thought it was normal. My stomach would be out to here. People would ask me when the baby is due. And again, I just thought it was normal until one day I mentioned it to my doctor and he said, no, that is not normal. Let's have you take a food sensitivity test. And the test showed that I was sensitive to casein and whey, which are two of the proteins found in dairy, as well as gluten. So once I eliminated dairy as well as gluten, not only did the health of my skin improve, but overall I felt so much better. So eliminating inflammatory foods is very important. If we keep eating inflammatory foods, we keep causing inflammation. Inflammation causes all kinds of disease, including aging. And if we eat foods we have a sensitivity to, same thing, we keep causing inflammation. Now, it can be difficult to figure out which foods do we have a sensitivity to. So if you don't want to take a food sensitivity test, as I did, you could do an elimination diet meaning you eliminate the foods you think are causing havoc for a while and if you feel they actually didn't you can always incorporate them back into your diet and if you feel better you leave them out but really for me eliminating inflammatory foods and again those foods i had a sensitivity to made a huge difference in the health of my skin as well as my overall well-being Something else diet related which made a huge difference for me was to give my gut microbiome some love and improve the health of my gut microbiome. Our gut houses billions of bacteria, some good, some bad, and ideally they live in harmony with each other. But we can easily throw off this balance by taking too many antibiotics, eating too much sugar, stress can throw off our gut microbiome, and a host of other things. For me, having starved myself for so long, I had also starved my gut microbiome. Once I started eating again, as I said, I was so afraid of fat, I was also afraid of protein. So what I mostly ate was processed food which came in packages and told me exactly how many calories were in there. Now these processed foods were rich in sugar and having this already starved gut microbiome and then feeding it a bunch of processed foods rich in sugar did not do it any favor. So what I had to do is eliminate simple sugars as much as possible, eliminate again processed foods as much as possible but also feed my gut microbiome plenty of pre-probiotics from vegetables, from fiber, as well as probiotic rich foods such as kombucha, sauerkraut, yogurt, or other fermented foods. So for me, giving my gut microbiome some love made a huge difference in the health of my skin, but also the way I was feeling. When our gut microbiome is imbalanced, it can cause depression, anxiety, and a host of other problems. So, giving our gut microbiome some love, 
eliminating foods which can throw it off balance, such as simple sugar, taking too many antibiotics, too much stress, too much alcohol, all of those things, and feeding it plenty of pre-probiotics and probiotic-rich foods can make a big difference. And then lastly, as far as diet related, we hear this all the time, of course, and that is drinking plenty of water. Now, for me, I used to never drink any water. I used to only drink diet soda. I would go on a bike ride and put Diet 7 up in my water bottle. Now, that sounds crazy to me now, but that's what I did. So I really had to eliminate diet sodas and replace them with plenty of water. So now I have this big jug right here. This is two liters. Since it is very hot where we live, you can probably see I'm sweating. It is insanely hot here. I drink at least two of these a day. So at least four liters. But for me, eliminating diet sodas and replacing them with water has made a huge difference. Again, not just in the health of my skin, but the way I feel overall. When we are dehydrated, we do not feel too good, right? So make sure you drink plenty of water. Something else that is incredibly beneficial for our whole body, our emotional well-being, but also the health of our skin is exercise. Studies actually show that regular exercise slows down skin aging and increases collagen content in the skin. So regular exercise is good for so many things, but it also slows down skin aging and increases collagen content in the skin. Now, over-exercising is not a problem too many people have. I used to over-exercise. I used to work out for hours and hours and hours to burn as many calories as I possibly could. And most of the time I did so in the sun without any sun protection. So that of course caused a lot of oxidative stress and free radical damage. So I had to learn to exercise a healthy amount and also protect myself from the sun. So a regular exercise in a controlled environment or if we exercise outside, protecting ourselves from the sun is incredibly beneficial, not just for the whole body, our emotional well-being, but also for the health of our skin. Practicing stress management and prioritizing my sleep has made a huge difference, not just in the health of my skin, but my overall life. As I said earlier, I used to have very bad rosacea, along with all kinds of dermatitis, including perioral dermatitis. When I had my first bad flare-up of rosacea and my first bad flare-up of perioral dermatitis, that is such a mouthful, each time I was under a lot of stress. Now, I'm not saying the stress caused my rosacea, nor my dermatitis, but stress is definitely a trigger for me. Once I had my rosacea for a bit longer, each time I had a lot of stress, it flared up. Same with my perioral dermatitis. So I had to really learn to practice stress management. Of course, there are many different things we can do to practice stress management. Exercise is a great one. For me, however, since I was an over-exerciser back then, exercise caused me even more stress. So one day I sat down and decided to meditate. It was a long journey because I, like so many of us, I think, thought that meditation was sitting cross-legged, going like this, with incense burning in the background, and clearing my mind. So it was a long journey for me to realize what meditation actually is. And if you want me to, I would be happy to make a video on it because I think that meditation is so incredibly beneficial, but also so incredibly misunderstood. 
So for me, I started taking five to 20 minutes a day to meditate and it made a huge difference in the health of my skin and as I said, my overall well-being and my whole life. Because I had no way to manage my stress before I started meditating, I also had a very hard time sleeping. So I was sleep deprived, which we know affects so many things. So if you are experiencing a lot of stress, try to find some way to practice stress management. There are so many different things we can do. You don't have to meditate, going for a walk, exercising, journaling, calling a friend, taking a bath, painting, whatever helps you to relieve some of that stress and making sleep a priority. As I said, for me, before I actually learned stress management, I could not sleep. If that is not your problem and you just don't make time for sleep, as so many of us do, sleep is somewhere on the back burner, try to make sleep a priority. A lack of sleep affects so many things and we don't call it beauty sleep for no reason. And then lastly, I think all of us feel our best and our most beautiful and glowing when we are happy. Now, of course, it is not possible to be happy all the time, but I think we can probably all agree that one thing that makes us unhappy is criticism. I don't know about you, but I have a very vocal, very outspoken inner critic and for the longest time I was not even aware of this inner critic. It was a tape that ran on autopilot all day long, feeding me all kinds of negativity, which I subconsciously believed. When I finally became aware of that tape that ran on autopilot, I realized it was not necessarily something I wanted to listen to all day long, nor was it healthy for me. So what helped me was to picture this very outspoken inner critic as an outside person. Imagine an outside person talking to you the way you talk to yourself all day long. How long would it take you to say, shut up and get away from me? Hopefully not very long. So that put it into perspective for me. If I wouldn't want an outside person talking to me in this way, and I surely don't, then why would I talk to myself this way? And that realization helped me to quiet my inner critic. She is still very active and wants to tell me all day long what she thinks, but I now have the awareness and I can say, no, I don't want to listen to it, tell it to somebody else and then redirect that negativity into something positive. And that has made a huge difference in my overall life and with that, the health of my skin. So if you have a very active inner critic, I think almost all of us do, maybe that exercise of picturing that voice as an outside person can also be beneficial. So these are the things that have helped me drastically improve the health of my skin as well as my overall well-being which had nothing to do with skincare, skincare devices or procedures. I hope this video was helpful and as I said this is not necessarily a complete list of things we can do to improve the health of our skin, our overall well-being. So if you have something to add I would love to hear it please let us know in the comments. And also, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I always love to hear from you. Thank you so, so much for being here. I so appreciate the time you spent with me. Until next time, bye.